welcome back to the channel this week. Thanks for joining me for what will probably be now, but must be part eight of the SU27 build. This week we are dealing with the, uh, the reheat or the exhaust parts of the engine. And we're straight into the action as always, as I like to do my video, straight into the action with the building of the previously mentioned exhausts. So just a little close up of all the parts that are involved with this part of the build. As is custom with this great kit, the details are all there, nicely presented and looking great, I might say. So whilst we take a look at the sprue there, you'll notice on the left side, whilst I show you the gray color, which I'll be using, which is 305, Mr. Hobby. On the left side, that sprue is for the engines when they're parked up and not in use. And then the right side of the sprue, it shows them in the, in almost like the, not the closed position, but the flight position. Just showing you here the colors that I'm gonna be using for this process. I do believe as the video uh, or the episode goes forwards, I will sort of show brief reminders of the colors that I'm using as I'm using them. As previously mentioned, yep, some really nice details that I've grown very accustomed to with this build. Whilst we take a little pause again, looking um, at the uh, the airbrush that I'm using, which was the uh, one I'm borrowing off a friend. It's a Harder and Steenbeck one, but I'll be honest with you, I cannot get on with it. It's, it's I don't know why. Uh, at the moment, I'm using the Awata Neo, and I get on really well with that. I guess it's it's each to their own and their own preferences, but that one I just can't get used to. So I use it for a while in this um, episode, and then I, I go back to the, my trusted steed. So using Mr. Hobby 305 Grey, it's a case of um, painting the afterburner igniter I, I, for want of a better phrase i'm not fully genned up with all the exact phrases um of all the parts of the aircraft i don't have a phd in su-27s or 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 uh, fighter jets but uh, i think that's what it is so just giving it a coat of the gray now the reason why i'm doing it gray is I've, I've done a lot of research into looking at all the different um thrust parts or exhaust parts of the su-27s and again they do vary as is is normal with um fighter jets just through different use, maintenance programs, types, air forces, etc. Um, it is. It became apparent that they are a light, quite a light colour, and they're all actually very visible when you sort of poke your nose into the back of them or, or take photos. So, I've done it a light grey. It's also um, recommended in the kit instructions to paint some light grey as well. So that's what I do. Give that a, a, a coat of grey. Whilst I'm doing that. I'd like to thank you all for joining me this week and thank you ever so much again for all the kind comments last week a couple of them really stood out and uh, really kept me going i was feeling a bit a bit crappy last week um, hence sort of the narration maybe coming across almost a bit sort of anxious per se uh, because i was anxious so uh, that was that was how it was last week but uh, feeling better this week um, thanks for all your, your messages we appreciate that and hopefully that comes through with my commentary today so here we are, just uh, taking a quick look at my handiwork. Pretty happy with that. Oh, and a nice close-up of the uh, of the white paper that I uh, have as my background. Anyhow, so next up is the Tamiya Rubber Black SF XF65, and that is what I'm going to use uh, on this occasion to paint the fan blades. Now, I quite heavily thinned that just also, just for a couple of reasons. A, I didn't want it to be a uniform black because they're not a uniform black. And then in the close-ups, which you'll see shortly, it does look a bit sort of not not uniform and also a little bit not sort of how you probably paint it yourselves. But when you're actually looking at it with a naked eye, it actually looks the part. It's just the close-up, it doesn't quite. So I'm happy with that anyhow. So to steady my hand using two hands, and then it's just a case of working from the center outwards and methodically working my way around the fan blades. as I like to, getting you up and close to the action. There we go, a nice close up. Just work from the center outwards. I don't need to go too close to the center so as to um, paint the cone part of that, and you can't see it anyway, but I was doing this more for sort of uh, self-satisfaction. Just a case of methodically working your way around. 
do apologize my camera work was a little bit shoddy at this part um it's a great view of the number four and the sprue to the right um i was unaware whilst i was engrossed in painting the fans that it had gone off camera for you so sorry about that guys and girls anyhow back in view and as you can see it doesn't look great on a close-up view but um as i say to the naked eye it, look, it looks fine and it's just a case of working around don't don't need to be too neat with this because it's barely visible but i used it for a bit of practice Next up, AK-479 um, aluminium. And this is a cake was uh, a dry brushing. So uh, it's, the, the sprite, the, the, I can get my words out, the, the paint itself is for airbrushes, but um, I thought I'd just give it a go with my trusty dry brush. And it actually um, works out really well. So it's a case of loading up the brush with said silver or aluminium. And then just as always, using a piece of tissue paper or a toilet roll, as is the case here, uh, just taking the excess off. So you've just got a little amount left just so it will pick out the like the highlights or the ridged areas of anything that you're dry brushing. I've covered this before. I think it was in part one or two when I was doing the seats of the in the cockpit. Um, uh, it's the same process and it was just a case of doing the um, igniter section for the afterburner, which is what you see in front of you and just dusting it over. And as you can see, it picks out the highlights it's not uniform either, so it just gives it not a chipped effect, which, well, it kind of does, but just not a, a uniform effect, which is exactly what I was looking for. So I got a little comparison. I think that's what I'm doing here in this um, shot of one with and one without. And again, get a dry brush, nice close up view for you. I'd like to get you in on the action, like I say, and it just picks out the highlights. Whilst I'm doing that, I'd just like to say thank you ever so much to my loyal subscribers. I really uh, appreciate it. Uh, the numbers continue to grow, so I am very thankful for that. If you haven't already, hit the like and subscribe button and also hit that bell for notifications. I've had some people saying that they're not getting the notifications. That's not down to me. I've, I've done some research on it. I'm doing everything right. It must be your own settings or wherever you are. So uh, maybe have a look into that. I wouldn't want you to miss out. So as you can see, I've painted up the fan blades. Not particularly uh, neat and tidy job on the outside, but that's where it's going to be glued, so I didn't need to be. And it's just a case of dry brushing the the, the, the edges of the fan blades just to sort of give them uh, make them more make them stand out and just give them that sort of uh, used look nice close up with my thumb there apologies there we go that's better and also just doing the um for one of the better phrase the, the tip um of the cone as well and again that just highlights it and gives it that used look and there we have it two sprues so next up, uh, Mr. Color 61 Burnt Iron. And that we are going to uh, paint the, the main sort of exhaust area where the igniter and the cone will be housed. Some cool detail there for, uh, to be seen. And that will just be a uniform sort of just paint job inside that. I must admit the Mr. Color metalizers are, are really good and this burnt iron is no exception to that. It sprays on absolutely delightfully. 50-50 uh, was the mixture with Mr. Leveling, uh, Self-Leveling Thinner and it, it comes on a treat. So moving quickly on, we're, we're actually doing the main part of the exhaust, uh, the after, uh, yeah, the main part of the exhausts where the petals are um, and that again was done with the burnt iron. So it was, yeah, just a case of marching on now and getting this done. This, uh, here we, here I am showing the parts and how they go together very briefly. I'm not gonna drag this out because I do want you to subscribe and to enjoy my videos and to come back for more. So I'll just show you the rough idea and obviously it's, that's how it goes. Plonk that in, keep it level and then this pops through the bottom and it's just a case of gluing them in situ. In situ. Very happy with that though. Some nice highlights of the details there. Looks good on the eye. Here we have the main part of the, um, the thrust or the afterburners. Bit of metallic smoke gonna come on here. Now the aim of this was to not have it sort of uniform and bland because it's not on the real thing. So I'm gonna use various different paints. It may almost seem like I'm overdoing it or, or why are you painting over what you've already done? 
because it actually does show through and it does make it less uniform and it gives it that realistic look that I was looking for. So some meticulous masking that I wasn't gonna bore you with. You can thank me later for that. Um, so this was just a case of uh, using smear masking tape, painting, uh, sorry, masking over every other petal of the thrusters. We're gonna call them thrusters. I know it's not the exact word for it, but work with me here, please guys. Um, but, but masking the, um, every other petal of the, of the thrusters. Then I painted them, uh, I think it was pale gold. Now for some reason, uh, or was it silver? I can't quite remember, uh, sorry about that. But um, yeah, painted every other one. And it's just a case of removing the masking tape. I do apologize for not um, putting up what, what I have actually painted this with. I'm trying to get better with that. I think it was pale gold, to me as pale gold because um, on the reference photo that I've got of this, um, there's a particular one with in the, in the same camo colors, um, but it, I think it's number 71 of the Ukraine Air Force. It does, it's quite a light interior to the, um, to the engine. So I've, I've, I've basically copied that. And it's just a case with the tweezers, removing uh, the masking tape, and then you get a bit of variation now. And it's starting to come, it's starting, it's starting to uh, come to life now. Next up, a bit of Tamiya Dark Copper. Again, like I say, I fully appreciate that there's lots of colours here and I'm just covering one over the other, over the other, but it does show through and it does actually work. It seems like it shouldn't work, but it does because you're not fully covering. You're almost giving different variations and tones in the colours, the, the coppers, the golds, the, the silver, the aluminium, the chrome, etc. It all works together in its own intricate way and it just adds variation. It's very pleasing on the eye. And more importantly for me, it's actually pretty damn accurate as well. So low pressure here, just to dust over as you can see. Not going too mad with it but just getting the lighter color to shine through as is the case on the real thing. And I fast forwarded this, uh, I, don't, I don't want you to, uh, to uh, have to see the same scene uh, for too long. I'm trying to uh, keep things fresh for you. Next up, Hot Metal Blue by um, Alclad. Again, one of my favorite companies for producing metal paints. And just like before, when we were doing the uh, main engine sections, it was a case of getting a bit of sponge, dabbing, uh, dabbing it off, and then sort of giving a mottled effect, because that is very much evident on the inside of the petals of the, um, of the afterburners. So the reason why that's wobbling around like crazy is just me dabbing off the, the excess blue parts so that it doesn't sort of uh, swamp all over. It's not an overbearing color. And then using my tweezers, it's, it's difficult to pick up in this video footage, I must admit, but uh, it is there, and it's just a light uh, sort of dabbling or a mottling of the blue, and it really varies it up. And it, again, it's accurate, it's how it is on the real thing. Hot metal blue shine through. You can just about make it out there. In the case, it's almost a case of less is more. You don't want to overdo this. But again, it looks like I've done nothing. I mean, it just looks like I'm dabbing a sponge on, um, on, the, uh, on the thrust, on the afterburner petals. It's crazy, but trust me, it does work. So just while I'm doing that and you're taking a look, I think you can see it a little bit better. There's going to be a, uh, a box review coming up soon of a certain kit. I'm not going to say too much now, but I'm pretty sure you probably all figured it out by now. Uh, I'm not sure when I'm going to release that, um, but uh, that'll probably be the next video. Next week we will be dealing with decals and then uh, probably a bit of weathering as well because we, we're just getting there now. This I, I think it'll only be two, maybe a maximum three more episodes and the aircraft will be done. It may be three episodes, because so I'm probably going to do a review at the end with some photos. 
and uh, if you have any suggestions let me know now you can just see the blue there on the petals that it's, it's pretty evident now uh, which is good because I, I wanted you guys to see that so this is a case if you have to build four four pieces to make the afterburner section of the engines now I have waxed lyrical about this kit all the way through but I've got to say on this case this was a royal pain in the bottom to do this Grey Wall Hobby, why have you done this? Okay, it's good for access, but just do it in two halves, maybe. This was such a pain in the ass to do. I really struggled with it. I'll be honest with you. It was a right, yeah, it was a right pain. I, I can't emphasize that enough. I mean, I know you guys will be fine with it, because as I say, I know you're all professionals, and uh, you're probably laughing at me with this one, which is cool. I've got broad shoulders, I can take that. But uh, yeah, I struggled with this, and it was, it, to be honest with you, it did my head in. I just thought, this is utterly pointless. Why have they done this? <laughs> but anyhow, we, I, I persevered on, and of course, because you got to, and uh, we, we won the war with this. But uh, yeah, it would be my first proper complaint about this kit. Which, to be fair, considering we're like four fifths of the way through, um, I, it's, it's pretty good going. Maybe I was a bit spoiled because it's been such a good kit all the way through. I don't know, but uh, yeah, this will be my one grumble of the kit is building these. This was a bit of a pain, an unnecessary pain, should I say? So there we go. Having a view there, you can see the inside of the um, of the afterburners looking pretty good. I'm, I, I must say, I'm very happy with how these are coming out. Just how I sort of envisaged it, actually. So there we have it. Two completed afterburners. I really like the details inside these. It's just a bit of a pain in the bum to, uh, to build, but uh, I hope you agree. Let me know in your, your thoughts in the comments section below, but I'm really happy with how these have come out. So, change of pace. In the last uh, episode, you will remember I did the silver work around the gun. Um, so it was just a little bit, I basically just grabbed it because I saw it needed doing a little bit of a wash on the on this area, just to sort of bring it to life and make it look less sort of uniform in the color. So just doing the, uh, the vent area, I suppose. I've still got to add the barrel to the gun in here. That'll probably be one of the last things I do, to be honest. I've got to be careful here because you might remember um, when I did the engines, it was when I did the weathering on them that all the paint went AWOL on it and it went bad. And uh, yeah, we this this uh, build nearly came to an end. Well, I, <laughs> I, I, I guess the, the, the form of stupidity is to go back and do the same thing again that you've done wrong. But here I am doing it. But I'd learnt my lesson last time and I just did it with light moderation this time. I could have um, put a gloss varnish over it and gone the long route but I just thought I'll oh, sod it you know I'm, I'm using such a small amount it it will be okay and and, and as as it goes I, I had learned my lessons and I was careful with it as you can see here I treated it with respect just light weathering and no dabbing or dragging and it, it worked out well I'm not saying I recommend this way uh, you can use Tamiya panel line accent I'm sure um, I'm just using oil paints with some white spirit um, and I'm sure there's safer ways to do it. And uh, to be honest with you, this is where my knowledge is probably a little bit lacking the, with the difference between enamels and, and things like that. So if anyone has any helpful, use, useful guides, hit me up below. I know it seems amateur, but hey, I'm just being honest. I don't know everything, you know. And uh, as you shown there, my, I, I managed to drag away a bit of the, uh, the chrome work there, which I did rectify later on. So uh, moving on, um, the rest of this sort of part of this section is, is basically you're, you're seeing my, my process of how I just work through with bits that I noticed that need to doing. So here I'm doing the tail planes, the, the last sort of grey sections. I've used mask oil there, which I found really good for just getting curved areas done. And, and it, yeah, this is just a case of me going around through the kit, noticing what needs painting and doing it. There, there's no method to my madness here. I was quite pleased with this bit. 
nice thin bit of Tamiya because I didn't buy the mask set, which is another lesson learned. I could have saved a shed load of time if I'd bought one of the masking sets, but I didn't because A, I'm stingy, and B, I just thought I'd try my skills out, which, yeah, okay, I've, I've my skills, I'm not shouting my own trumpet here, I'm pretty pleased with that. Um, so I've got the skill, but the time that I, I lost doing this was probably a little bit excessive where I could have just used a mask. So Mr. Hobby 307, the grey for this section. Fully masked up, because I don't want any overspray. I've learnt my lesson with that, so uh, fully masked up. And then it's just a case of spraying this section, as always. So to say, a little bit less than that. I think for the next build, I'm going to see if there's any masks uh, pre-cut, just to save me a bit of time. Because it does do my, it, it, it does get a bit tedious masking constantly. I do enjoy it because it's a skill and it is cool when it comes out right. But uh, I think, yeah, do you know what? If there's a mask for it, it's going to save me 45 minutes just to do the refueling section. Then I think it's probably sensible to do that just to keep it fresh in my in my mind. Well, not in my mind, just keep myself fresh, really, because it does get a bit stale masking hour after hour after hour. Don't get me wrong, it's not a complaint, but it's, um, uh, yeah, it would just, just freshen things up a bit if um, I had the, the pre-cut masks. Might be lazy on my part. You might be screaming at the computer going, you lazy gets, you know, do it this way. Fair enough, but <laughs> if, if I can work smart and not hard, I'm gonna take that option. Anyhow, I'm waffling a bit there, apologies. Okay, that's all painted up. It's just a case of removing the masking tape. So whilst I'm doing that, just uh, a sort of pre a preview for next week. Next week, I'm what I'm hoping, um, it will again be another Thursday video, and I'm hoping that I will be showing you some footage of the decals going on. Now, I'm with that, I need your help, guys, with what you want to see. I'm obviously going to do video footage of all the decals going on. Now, do you want to see the whole process? Do you want to see it sped up? or just highlights such as the main markings. I'm pretty sure you're not gonna wanna see me putting like 60 no step marks around around the aircraft. So hit me up with what you like. This is your channel as well. Um, you know, you are the people. Um, let me know what you like, okay? So, thumbs up from me. Um, not sure why it was a thumbs up from me there. There was obviously a reason. I think it could have been to, I don't know, congratulating myself over the masking. I don't know, but anyhow. We move on. Now, I'm not sure what the pause is over here. I think it's because my gray wasn't correct. But anyhow, I've moved on because, yeah, I obviously, obviously sorted it out. And uh, there we go. That's how the masking came out. I, I, I am pretty pleased with that, I'll be honest with you. It's not perfect. Um, like I'm, I'm talking it's 95 percent there's a couple of little niggly bits there that me being the ever being the perfectionist i'm looking at going oh for god's sake that's not quite right but do you know what i'll be forever ch chasing my tail with it otherwise so just a case of demasking as always and while i'm doing that I'll reach out to you guys some more. If there's anything you feel I can improve on my videos or any sort of style or anything like that, hit me up. Um, I'm, I'm always open to suggestions. I want to improve. I want to get this as best as I can for everyone. So yeah, hit me up with your, your, your thoughts and, and comments. It'd be much appreciated. So um, as seems to be the, the theme of this video, we're going backwards and forwards. So it's back now, the engines have dried, they've gassed out, um, everything's all good. Now it's a case of using that Alclad Blue. As you can see, I've um, masked up the main petals on the, um, re on the uh, afterburners. I've not done them uniform, so there's some with only one gap between, some with two, some with three, as is again on the real aircraft. And also it's, it it's just adds a little bit of, um, well just something more pleasurable on the eye so it's just a case of building up the blue now i quite like this blue i must admit it, it um, the hot section blue it, it just seems to bring everything to life really nicely 
and you might have noticed a bit of spitting there it's something that does sometimes happen with um our cloud it can just be a bit of a git sometimes but i wasn't fussed this time because it's not uniform on the real aircraft so there was any sort of marks and and spots and etc i wasn't fussed because it was actually adding to it but uh, i'd have done with bits if that had been um i don't know an american airlines chrome aircraft i would have probably uh, not been too impressed but uh I did find myself, I'll be honest with you in this video, I think because the monotony got to me, um, I'm not perfect and I know you see a lot of YouTube videos out there where everything's perfect and you don't see any mistakes etc. That's great, I, I get that. Listen, I'm real. Um, if I mess up, you guys are going to know I mess up, okay? Um, uh, that's how, how I do things. And to be honest with you, I did find myself rushing. I've been chirping on to you guys. Don't rush. Don't do this. Don't do that. If only I practice what I preach sometimes. I must admit, in certain areas of this kit, I had to properly tell myself off a couple of times and just almost walk away. Stop myself rushing. There is no hurry, okay? If the video comes out two weeks later, with all due respect to you guys, it's, it's kind of tough. I want this to be perfect, so I've, I've, I've sort of had to have words with myself just to, to slow down a little bit. Anyhow, waffling again, I do apologise, but uh, here we go. That's the engines done. I'm pretty happy with that, and now it's just a case of putting various filters over them. Um, I think I did that off screen, but just sort of dulling it down. It might be further on down once the, those uh, engines are dried. So here we go, and this is not Egyptian hieroglyphics. This is uh, me masking off the uh, where the pitots go on the uh, on the side of the aircraft. Uh, if you hear some drilling in the background, deep joy. Someone's decided they're going to use an amount of drill outside my house on the main road. Terrific. Anyhow, um, so the whole aircraft's masked off. I, I've got to tell you, this took me easily an hour to do. This is why I'm on about. Next time I'm going to, if for my next kit, if I can find some masks, I'm going to use them. Not out of laziness, not out of lack of talent. It's just this was an hour just doing this alone and it was driving me bloody crazy by the end of it so um and i've got no magnifying equipment which is something i'm going to purchase next week i'm going to buy a headset thing for that so using ak's gun metal we basically sprayed all the areas that needed spraying can't say it more exotically than that unfortunately So the front bit was um, gun metal, and then you'll notice that the back of the engines, there's some sections there, and I think that was done in airframe aluminium. And it's just a case of really gently building up the, uh, the layers here, because this stuff, and oh yeah, that was me just touching up the gun area, by the way. Um, yeah, because this stuff, if you get it wrong, it can really blast out and cause you headaches. So it was, um, a real, it was just a case of uh, gently, gently, and just building it up. Again, fast forwarded for your uh, viewing pleasure. So I, I spared you the spraying of, uh, of, of these bits. It's just a case of in one fell swoop, pulling away the masking tape. And that's these sections pretty much done now. And if there's any slight overspray there, which there was, it's something I've got to improve on. I will be honest with you. I'm hoping when I get the magnifying uh, headset that I'll be able to just see, get the tape in a little bit closer. But in the end, I just used the uh, the, the end of a, a, an old airbrush needle and I just picked it away and it didn't take up the paint underneath as I knew it wouldn't and it, it ended up looking really smart. Anyhow, I'm rather pleased with this masking. This has all come out how I wanted it to. Um, doing circular bits and ovals seem to be a bit of a strong point for me, so very happy with that. They're all good to go now. And it's quite good because these little fiddly bits, they're done now, you know, it's over with. Um, and, and we're marching on with this build now. And next up is, you know, next episode, as I say, is going to be decals and we're going to be moving forwards and the aircraft is going to start coming to life pretty rapidly, even further now. Which I hope, like me, you're quite excited for. Um, do make sure you, you check back next week. Hopefully I'm going to release you on Thursday. I don't know how much of a decal I'm going to have because unfortunately I've got a dreaded day job in between. So uh, we'll see. So it's back to the engines as I thought I might do. Um, and it was a case of uh, using various uh, metallics just to... Uh, 
it was almost like not a wash but just like a, a filter just to dull down the starkness uh, of between the blue and the silvers and here we've got a darker color just to do the tips of the um, afterburners I cannot believe of all the things in the background right now, I've got a pneumatic drill going. I live under the approach to an airport. You can't hear that. You can hear a pneumatic drill. Unbelievable. Anyhow, you may not be able to hear it in the recording. I guess I'll find out in a bit. There we go. So that's the end, uh, the tips of the uh, afterburners done. It's still looking a bit shiny for my liking. So uh, next up it is uh, drabbing it up with again with a further filter just to take the edge off things. But these are really coming how together of how I wanted them. And there we are, no, no masks now, just really light, light coat. So everything shines through first. You don't want to drown out what's underneath, but I just wanted to dull it down a little bit, make it less stark. And I think I pretty much achieved that there. You can see it still very easily, but it's not so glaring. Look, look at the difference. Yeah, very happy with that. So, happy chappy with these. To be honest with you, I was absolutely dreading doing these exhausts because I don't have any experience uh, of doing this. So I've watched lots of other people using YouTube, uh, which is a great thing to learn on and, and just seeing what they've done. I, I, I'm pretty proud of myself for what I've achieved with these. There, there will be, the, I don't like to call them rivet counters. There are people that like more accuracy and that's fine and they may be able to pick holes in it that's great do you know what if i probably looked at the real thing i could probably pick holes in it but for where i'm at i am very happy with the accuracy of this and as you just saw me there this is a really highly diluted 90 percent thinners to 10 percent paint rubber black at really low pressure just lightly dusting over for the final part of this just to get to make almost grimy it up a little bit But yeah, I'm happy with those. Don't get me wrong, I didn't go dancing down the road saying, look at my exhaust, everyone. But uh, yeah, I, I'm pretty happy. Happy enough to pop them on the channel anyhow, which I was relieved about because I thought that would be really where I was going to come unstuck. I actually delayed doing it for quite a while just for that fact. It was almost a case of <laughs> uh, eventually having to take the leap of faith because I didn't want to screw it all up. But yeah, happy, happy chap. As you can see, the state of my hands while I'm doing this, uh, yeah, it's, it's a bit crazy. It's almost like I paint my hands more than I paint the subject. So do you guys get that? I should buy some gloves, but I don't know if I like gloves. So I do, I hope it doesn't put you off seeing me grubby hands. It is paint from doing this. It's not anything else. It's just, yeah, look, there's bits of silver and blue and all sorts where I sit and do a session of um, kit building. Honestly though, my hands get so filthy afterwards I have to give them a right good scrub down. We'll call it model maker's hand. So there we go. You can see they've lost, lost their, their shine and the luster. It's, it's, it looked beat up. I'm damn happy with that. So, uh, yeah. So happy I gave a thumbs up and a proper one too. Why not? Right, uh, these are... Oh, do you know what? I found these bits so boring. But it had to be done. So uh, these these little sort of diameter well hexagonal shaped things on the side i don't know what they are and quite frankly i don't care uh, and i did a nice bit of circular masking i was pretty happy with those my masking game is strong and then also the forward uh, leading part of the slats for the uh, wings as well <coughs> excuse me so this was just using uh, a gray number 306 and i think it had a touch of another gray as well like a, a, a darker grey. Do it, do it to how you see fit. Um, here you can see I've sprayed those edge bits because it was so boring. I just thought, you know what, I cannot put my subscribers through that. But I thought I would just show the nose cone being done 
um, just to show it's done and just to include you guys. You're all my friends, so I'm trying to include you without, without going too far without, of course. So just a nice gentle coat. It comes up quite shiny, which is a bit perturbing to start with, but of course it's aqueous, so it's got a sort of sheen to it anyway. But when I do the final matte um, varnish over this, or matte um, clear coat, not varnish, clear coat over this, it'll all bring it down to how I want it anyhow. I tell you what I really struggled with here, and I did fall afoul of it, was moving the sides of this kit without touching those gray bits that I had painted, because I'm so used to putting my hand there, I had to pull myself up twice. I actually had to respray them because I, my, my sort of inside of my hand touched them. So, there we go, very happy with that. And it's just a case of popping the masking um, tape off next. So you can see they're all there and looking good and it was just a case of demasking or unmasking the front without touching places I, I shouldn't. And carefully, carefully. The circles weren't perfect. I'm going to go with a 90%, which will do. I think, to be honest with you, I, honestly, I got to the point now, it's quite late in the evening, and it's again something I've learned. I got to that point where, listen, it's 90%, it, it, it's, it's fine. I do, honestly, I, I take this very seriously, but um, and I love my kit building, but there are just times with certain things I'm like, oh, yawn, seriously, I cannot be bothered with this bit. Whereas I see other people and they take pride in every bit. Don't get me wrong, I take pride in everything. There are just some bits that bore me to tears. I don't know uh, why that is. Uh, it just is one of those things. I take, you know, I want my kit to be 100% perfect. I've put a lot of time and effort into it. But I've got to be honest with you, this section bored me and maybe those circular bits possibly suffered a little bit because of it don't judge me for it um, i will touch those up to be honest with you in fact i may even remask them and, and do them once i've got a bit of the decals and maybe something a bit more fun but fun done just go around and just sort of touch up the uh, some odds and ends So there we are, nearly done with uh, demasking the nose. And listen, this week's video is coming to an end now, guys. Uh, time flies, I know. I hope um, you feel entertained and uh, you've enjoyed this episode. If you have, hit the like and subscribe. If you haven't, let me know how I can improve it. We're all friends here and it's all good. Next week's episode will be Deckles. As you can see there, maybe I'm being a bit harsh on myself. They're, they're not too bad, those circular bits. They just need a slight touch-up, which I will do with a thin brush. It's, it's, maybe I was being a bit harsh on myself there. So thank you ever so much for joining me this week. Um, you guys mean the world to me. You keep me going. You keep this build on track. So uh, I thank you humbly for that. As I keep chirping on, if you haven't yet, hit the like and subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications. I'm hoping to bring out a video next week and I'm also hoping to do a box reveal at some point but uh, time will tell with that. So here she is ladies and gents, this is where we're at at the moment with the Great Wall Hobby SU27UB. I'm very happy with it. Let me know your thoughts and comments below. I really like to interact with you guys, it means the world to me. Um, thanks ever so much again for watching. Have a great week, happy modelling and have a good one. Take care and bye.